Good morning, this is Pastor Blake coming to you from the Sanctuary at Faith Community Church. Uh, we're continuing through our journey in the Psalms, and if you recall, a couple of times I paused and talked about different kinds of Psalms. There's 150 Psalms, uh, but we could put some in different categories, and it's helpful sometimes to see the genre or the style. So we talked about Psalms of Lament, where they're expressing their brokenheartedness. Uh, there's psalms that are called royal psalms or kingly psalms, and these sometimes are um, some direction for the king, uh, or they could even be messianic, the, the truth king that is coming, uh, the ultimate king that is coming in Jesus. There's also obviously psalms of praise and thanksgiving, but today we're going to talk about a category called imprecatory. Uh, imprecatory means uh, to curse someone, and so there are these Sometimes strange uh, feeling psalms, um, there's 20 plus uh, that fall into this category, depending on who's uh, making the category of these kinds of psalms. And one of the classics is Psalm 109. And so if you have your Bibles, I hope you'll track along with me and let's make sense of how does this get in scripture? Uh, in Psalm 109 verse one, my God whom I praise do not remain silent for people who are wicked and deceitful have opened their mouths against me. He goes on in verse four to say, in return for my friendship, they accuse me. Sometimes uh, you've heard me say something like, uh, no good deed goes unpunished. Well, that's what the psalmist is saying. In return for my friendship, they accuse me. Verse five, they repay me evil for good and they repay me hatred for my friendship. And so he then begins to say this to God. This is his prayer. Verse 8, about his enemy. May his days be few. Now, I think you can read between the lines what he's saying there, right? Look at verse 10. May his children be wandering beggars. Verse 11. May creditors seize all he has. And then down at verse 20, he kind of sums it up. May this be the Lord's payment to my accusers, to those who speak evil of me. So what do we make of this? What do we make of this kind of psalm? Sometimes it's a little embarrassing if we hear that read in scripture and we've invited uh, read in church and we have invited a friend to church and we're thinking, we're uh, praying that someone's life will be cut short, that their children will be wandering beggars, that creditors will take all they have. Well, I think we have to pause here and, and recognize that God is saying, I want you to be honest with me. I want you to bring your pain and your hurt I want you to bring it all the way to me. And I don't want you just to come and leave it there. I want you to walk on a journey with me. And so he says here in these first uh, 20 verses, judge him, Lord. God, you know what he's done or what she's done or what they've done. Lord, judge them. I think that's a healthy thing for us to do. Uh, we're told to allow room for God's judgment or God's vengeance. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And so we, it's okay for us to, instead of just uh, bottling it up or stuffing it down or talking about it with other people, we go to God and say, God, you judge it. But I want you to notice that this psalmist continues on a journey. So the next part of his journey is to be honest with his own wounding. I love this language. Look at verse 22. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. And so let's continue on the journey, right? God, I see this is what this person has done. Now let me just kind of turn inward, take away from them, turn inward on me. I'm wounded, Lord. This hurts. And then the journey continues. It's still, this is about them. Now it's about me. Uh, in verse, uh, verse 26 the, the me part is away from what I'm feeling to God, help me. Help me, Lord my God, save me according to your unfailing love. And so he goes from judging them, Lord, you judge them. Uh, this is what I perceive is happening, but you be the judge. Lord, I'm wounded. Lord, I need your help to look at the final phase. Verse 27, let them know that it is your hand that you, Lord, have done it. And so the final step in this kind of process is, Lord, whatever you do, however you do it, whether it's judging them or helping me or doing some of the combination of both, be glorified. When Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, the very foundational petition always needs to be, God, may you be glorified. 
So I want you to read through this psalm, and instead of being embarrassed by it, I pray it'll empower you to be honest, because all of us have been in situations where people uh, have done us wrong. Uh, at least our perception is that. So let's take it to God. Let's say, God, uh, you judge it. This is what I feel about it. You judge it. God, this is how it's impacting me. I need your help. But ultimately, God, I want you to be glorified. Lord God, I pray that you would be with each one of us today, that as we consider some of the slights and some of the accusations and things that have come against us, Lord, let us uh, offload it to you. Let us uh, share the hurt in our heart with you. Let us seek you for help. And ultimately, Lord, let us be content that you will bring glory to yourself, that we'll entrust you to be wise and good and fair in how you respond in this situation. Help us, Lord. Amen.